Do you remember Disney's Something Wicked This Way Comes? Hey everybody, I'm Adam Martinetti, and I've got to say, I don't, but I wish I did. Collider's own William Fisher has a lot to say about Disney's 1983 film adaptation of Ray Bradbury's novel of the same name, which was released as part of what's known as Disney's Dark 80s era. At the time, when Disney was releasing such dark fantasy films as Dragon Slayer, The Black Cauldron, Return to Oz, and The Watcher in the Woods, Disney also released Something Wicked This Way Comes, which ended up losing the money and was received to mixed reviews. Walt Disney's son-in-law, Ron Miller, was in charge of the studio at the time and trying to shake things up his strategy being to put out darker films that still focused on childhood fantasies and happy endings. But ultimately this era ended with his removal as studio president. Originally an unproduced screenplay for Gene Kelly, partly based on Bradbury's short story The Black Ferris, the film couldn't obtain financing, and then was turned into a full novel, which is said to be one of America's greatest fantasies, influencing everyone from Stephen King to R.L. Stein. In the 1970s, Kirk Douglas's production company even began work on the film with Paramount, and Bradbury was set to adapt the novel himself and the film be directed by Jack Clayton. Disney eventually took over the project in 1981, at that point only wanting the novel and Ray Bradbury. As part of their campaign to change their image involved bringing in younger, hipper directors, Jack Clayton was 61 years old at the time, so he didn't quite fit. Bradbury, however, said that if they wanted him, they had to take his director. Once working for Disney, Jack Clayton had an entirely new script written by John Mortimer, without Bradbury's knowledge or blessing. And when Bradbury was offered the chance to provide notes on the new script, all of them were rejected. While the production of the film was underway, Bradbury sent Miller many warnings that the film was not going in the direction that it should be. However, Ron Miller himself was unable to make any large changes, thanks in part to other studio influences, such as Card Walker, an executive who resisted any efforts to move away from his own ideas of what Walt Disney himself would have produced. This greatly affected many of the Disney films of that era, as the leadership didn't want any of the dark fantasies to be too dark. After a disastrous preview screening of the film, Miller finally listened to Bradbury, who blamed the poor reception on more than a few things including Jack Clayton's editing, John Mortimer's ending, and even the film's score by Georges Delarue. Given $5 million for reshoots, the film then received a new score from James Horner, a new ending, a new edit, and some narration to fill in the cracks where the edits couldn't. Despite his flaws, William Fisher believes Something Wicked This Way comes to be a great standout from Disney's experimental phase under Miller. And at 40 years old, it's worth checking out. You can check out William's full article linked in the description below. I haven't seen the film myself, but after learning all of this, I just about have to, right? Have you seen it? Leave me a comment below if you have or if you're going to. I'm Adam Martinetti, and don't forget to head over to Collider.com for all your movie news, trailers, and reviews. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.